Hello and welcome back to another video and today is going to be a little bit of a different style of video to what I am used to doing. I'm not doing a vlog, today I am telling you how I became the second ever homegrown Irish Super League player and how I came from Ireland, a place where rugby league isn't really big, to where I am now playing professional rugby league at York Knights. All the details, everything that happened and how I made it on my journey. So. Thank you for watching again. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and let's get into it. Where do I start? So as about an eight year old, back home in Dublin, in Balbriggan, a little coastal town, by the sea on the edge of Dublin, near the County Mead, if you know it. Um, my primary school teacher, Dan, shout out to Dan, was booting the ball out on the field, up in there, chasing it around like any mad eight year old would. And after the session, Dan said to the mother, listen, Rowan's pretty into this rugby crack. You should take him to the local team in Balbriggan. And not coming really from a rugby background, a rugby family, my mum did so. And as an eight-year-old, I wasn't that into sport, wasn't into rugby exactly. I was more into picking grass, running around, but I loved tackling, loved that side of it, the physical side of rugby. So that's what sort of kept me going every week. And as I got better, I got more into it. And as I got more into it, I got a little bit better until I started to progress and probably when I went into secondary school, maybe when I was 12 or 13 or 14, I realised this is where I want to have a career. I want to be a professional rugby player. At the time, I wanted to play for Leinster, play for Ireland, play rugby union. So rugby league was not even on the radar. I didn't even know it was a real thing. But I was mad for it, loving rugby union, playing at the hometown club. Um, eventually, I think I went on to Captain Balbriggan at maybe under 16s level. But a little bit prior to that, maybe under 16s as well, I got a North East Leinster trial. So I was about 15 years old at the time. And this was my opportunity to try to get my foot in the door with a professional setup. Not even a full Leinster trial, not even an academy trial, just a North East area. And I made it to the final round of the trials. And unfortunately, I got dropped. I got told I wasn't good enough. In my head, I probably thought I wasn't big enough, strong enough, fit enough. But I was told I wasn't all that. And in that moment, I think I realised that the hometown club was not where I'm going to progress and see the levels that I wanted to get to in rugby league. Sorry, not in rugby league, in rugby union, before I even knew rugby league was a thing. So where I wanted to get to in rugby was to play professionally for Leinster. And unfortunately, I felt that the hometown club was going to set me back. It wasn't pushing me in the direction that I needed to go. So at the end of that season, I decided to put my transfer request in handed on, said, listen to me coaches and my teammates. They could see the dream. They knew that I was ready to grow and move on from the team. But Leinster branch, the branch that ruled over the area that I was in in Dublin, um, in Leinster, as a fact, said, no, you have three options. You can move school, move house, or take a year out. They were my three options. Move school, move house, or take a year out. So as a 15, 16 year old, they're not really good options. You can't move house, you can't move school. So the year out was inevitable for me. But to me, I knew where I wanted to go. I wanted to transfer to Clontarf, which were the best team at the time. And I knew the direction that I wanted to go in. I knew I wanted to play professionally. And I seen that as the best opportunity to go professionally. At the end of the day, I was a big believer. And one of my coaches said it to me as well. They said, if you train with the best, you're gonna be the best. And where I was, I was, 15, 16 years old, training with the first team in Balbriggan already. I seen that, that that area of my life and that environment had a roof, it had a cap for where I was going. I couldn't get any further, I couldn't grow anymore. So I needed to change environments. I needed to move myself out of the hometown, that small town, that small area mentality and go somewhere bigger. And Clint Harford's the best team at the time. They were willing to take me on, but unfortunately the branch ruled out my transfer and led me to a year out. So. During my year out, I set out on a mission. I was smashing the gym, I was playing Gaelic football, playing hurling, doing everything that was in my power to stay as fit as possible. But that little gap, that something inside of me, wanted some more. So I was about 16 going on 17 at this stage during my, during my year out, and then um, I just was hounding my mum. Mum, I want to play rugby, I want to play rugby. And my mum was pulling her hair out. She was like, what are we going to do here? She was looking up tag rugby, sevens rugby, you name it, she was looking it up. But there was nothing we could do. I couldn't get my transfer through to the club. So most of Ireland is just rugby union. There was nothing else until we stumbled across this mad sport rugby league, which has led me to where I am today. 
So we rocked up to rugby league training session and uh, me and a few of the other lads who had joined me on my journey to make the transfer, we decided we all start playing rugby league together, a couple of my best mates, and we all said, right, we rocked up to the session and there we were at the rugby league session. We said, what's the name of the amateur team we're going to play for? And they all laughed and said, no, you're going to play for Ireland under 17s if you're good enough. So there was, at the time, so this was 2017, there was no amateur rugby league back home at an underage level. The setup isn't where it is now. There's been a lot of growth and development over the past six, seven years since I've been involved in the game as well. But at the time, that's where we were at. So we rocked up and they said, listen, no, you're going to be playing for Ireland under 17s. And we thought, this is class. Play, represent your country. When people have been saying to us, we can't even make the Northeast, we can't get a transfer, a chance to represent Ireland at an underage level and play rugby was just like our eyes lit up little did we know it's a bit of a different sport a little bit different going on but due to the fact that i was playing gaelic football smashing the gym trying to get bigger doing everything in my power to try and make a pro at rugby which i believed at the time was the right thing to do i was ready to hit the ground running and i played about five rugby league games that whole year over the over the course of 2017 over the course of the summer I played like a handful of games. A couple were just in-house training games. And we played um, the South Wales Ironmen and Wales under-16s twice. So we were Ireland under-17s. We played Wales under-16s home and away. And that was my sort of opportunity to show myself. And off the back of that year playing rugby league, I was like, ah, yeah, that's grand. That's done. Back into the union, trying to make a pro at union. And my transfer had actually been approved. So I was playing at Clontarf finally. I was buzzing, I was at the club that I wanted to be and the environment was chalk and cheese. The level of standard of training was up here and I was over the moon, I was killing it. I was in my final year of school back home as well, so I was 17 years old at this stage. This was 2018, doing me leaving sir and just training me ass off. I was training at Clontarf, training in the gym, studying for my exam, doing all the things in my power that I thought would make me the best version of me to get me to professional rugby. In the probably six or seven games I played that season for Clontarf. I scored eight tries and then the rugby league season came back and yeah, I was actually loving rugby league after the first year. So I was really starting to think maybe there's more of an opportunity there for myself because rugby union, as I said, eight tries in six or seven games, not a look in, not a hope again. So I was like, all right, what's the go here? So the rugby league season was about to kick off. I had me leaving, so I was approaching my final exams and then I got a phone call saying, um, saying on my February midterm, I can come over. Three other blokes from Ireland came over with me and we went to Huddersfield for the week. Just spent the week over training with the academy, training with the first team and sort of just getting a feel for what rugby league over here in the UK is like. So over here in a Super League environment, seeing what it's like. Because little did I know, 12 months prior, I didn't even know rugby league was played on this side of the world. I, I knew a bit about the NRL because of Sonny Bill Williams and Roger Taravasashek and people like that. But I genuinely had no idea it was played on this side of the world, yet alone in Ireland, barely, or over in England. So after that week in Huddersfield, I knuckled down for my exams. I was getting ready for my leaving, sir. And about two weeks prior to me leaving, sir, I got a phone call saying, Ronan, we're going to offer you a three-month trial over the summer at Huddersfield Giants Academy. And when I tell you, I was over the moon. That would be an understatement. I went from a bloke who got denied Northeast trials at the final hurdle, got denied a transfer from Leinster, had no opportunity within the rugby world at all. And now I'm going to Super League Academy only after playing rugby league a handful of times and getting an opportunity to go on trial. Everything I ever dreamed of, getting the opportunity to be in a professional environment. So I finished up my exams in Ireland, finished up my leaving, sir, and two or three days later, I was on a plane, bags packed, moving to the UK for the entire summer with no idea what was going on. I had my electric picnic so tickets sold, longitude tickets sold, all the crap that you have as a 17, 18 year old bloke finishing up his leaving. So I hadn't even turned 18 yet. I turned 18 over in Huddersfield, as a matter of fact. So at the time, Packed up shop and I went on that plane over to Huddersfield on my trial. Little did I know I had my blinkers on and sort of like ignorance is bliss in that sense. I didn't know what I didn't know. So I landed on trial and I just ripped in for the whole three months like a sponge taking in everything that I could. Because at the end of the day, like I literally didn't know how little I knew about rugby league. I'd only played a couple of games and over the course of the trial, I managed to play a bit of academy. And I think I totaled that 
about five academy games over the summer, um, which was pretty decent considering I came in for the back end of the season and had to settle in and adjust. So off the back of that, I, as the season finished up, I got offered a, a one-year academy extension. So academy back then was under-19s, and as I just turned 18, I had one more year of under-19s left, and Huddersfield offered me a, a one-year academy extension, and I was overjoyed. A real-life professional contract, even though it was only academy, I was over the bloody moon. I was so happy. So I was buzzing with that. Came back to Ireland in the off-season, obviously, told the family knew, everyone was overjoyed. I finally had a crack, but... Reality hadn't really set in now. As an academy player, you don't earn much money. You earn very little, as a matter of fact. So I didn't realise how tough it was going to be for myself trying to make ways and earn a living off the small academy wage which I was offered. But I went back to Ireland and then um, I got the call up into Ireland senior men's squad. I'd only played five games of academy and a handful of rugby league games prior to that. So I got the call up to Ireland men's senior squad and that year I was overjoyed. I was like, I've just got a new academy contract and now I'm in the squad for the senior team for the European Championship. I was made up with that. Little did I know, just a year on after playing my first game for Ireland under 17 in rugby league, would I be making my senior Ireland debut, getting my first cap and I managed to play three games that year in the European Championships against Scotland, Wales and France. And that was my first real eye-opener into it. The level. So I played a bit of academy before, not too much, but then I was stepping up another level again, made my senior Ireland debut at home in front of the family, which was something that I couldn't have dreamed of, one of the most special occasions of my life. As a third year academy player then, when I flew back out to Huddersfield after the off-season, I got to do a full Super League pre-season, which is really, really lucky opportunity as a third year academy, a full-time pre-season to get my fitness up, and wow, that blew my mind. I did not know what was going on. I was like, wow, training with people who I've literally been sat in the stands watching watching games with over the summer, or watching on TV as a matter of fact, and then all of a sudden I am here training alongside these people. So that was unbelievable and really good to rub shoulders with the best. And my learning curve was going like this. I was just learning and building and learning and building. And obviously I was still really raw. So the full academy season passed and it did me the world of good. Alongside playing academy, training with the first team i was working as a laborer building pallets at one of the sponsors pallet yards and that literally kept me going kept my head head above water because as i said as an academy player you're not earning that much money so i was laboring training with the first team playing academy and it was like spinning plates at the time but all i had was a dream and that i was on a mission all i wanted now was to play academy get a first team contract and as the academy season finished i was getting a bit worried thinking maybe I may not get signed on and luckily enough in the off season I got invited back to Huddersfield and signed a one year first team deal and this was in 2019 so I was 18 years old at the time no 19 years old apologies 2019 I was 19 years old and I got offered a first team deal I literally had been the first ever Irish player to play in academy and now I've got a super league contract there's only been one ever homegrown super league player who made a Super League debut and played in the Super League prior to myself, which was Brian Kearney, but we won't get ahead of ourselves. So I got this first team offer and I signed it straight away. I couldn't have been happier. The dream had been one step closer. I'd got a full-blown professional contract now. So I wasn't an academy player anymore. I was a Super League player. I was in the Super League squad. Again, as the off-season rolled on, I got to play two more internationals for Ireland and we qualified for the Rugby League World Cup, which was set to play in 2021. So I played five games for Ireland, I'd done a full academy season, I now had a first team contract and I was going into that first team pre-season ready to rip in, which I did again, training my ass off in that first team pre-season, doing all I could to just sponge off the players who are above me, more intelligent than me, wiser than me. And then as Christmas approached, probably early December in 2019, and the coaches pulled me in and said, you have this opportunity to go over to Canberra and get another year of underage rugby league in a professional environment. So Canberra Raiders are in the NRL. And I was like, oh my God, surely this can't be real. So I get to play under 20s for another year. And then they offered to extend me at Huddersfield till the following season. So 2021. So I could have got another year at Huddersfield after coming back from Canberra and spending the whole of 2020 there. So my life was complete. I get to go and play under 20s and get an extension on my contract. So 
I couldn't have been happier. This was like a dream come true. Go over to an NRL environment. So off I went early January, probably the second or third of January 2020, and I landed in Canberra with my extension signed for the following season in Huddersfield, and I was in Australia now. The bloke who'd literally been playing rugby league for less than two years was now in Australia in an under-20 setup in an NRL team at Canberra, and it was the best time of my life. I was overjoyed to be in Canberra playing rugby league and get such a good opportunity, and a bloke from Ireland who literally, as I said, didn't even know rugby league was a real thing a couple of years prior. And unfortunately, as, as everyone knows, the pandemic hit the world and we didn't know what was going on. As under 20 players, our contracts are fed down from the NRL and with the NRL going into full lockdown and bubble, we had essentially no contracts and no season. So our season was canceled. We, I played four trials. We had a buy round one and I never actually managed to play an official Jersey flag match for Canberra, which was absolutely good. But luckily enough, I managed to make it home safe and sound, back to Ireland again. But the iron ironic thing was, my contract in Huddersfield didn't start for till the 2021 season, and my contract in Canberra was essentially null and void due to the season being cancelled and a natural disaster and a pandemic. So I was back in Ireland, where I was probably two, two years prior doing my exams, and I felt like I was back at square one. I had no contract till the following season. I had no rugby to play. It was in lockdown. And I essentially, I had no, no earning power. I had no way of making a living. So I started cleaning windows, doing gutters, and working for a local company back home with one of my mates. And shout out to Peter Walsh. I know you're probably not going to watch this video, but he took me in in the middle of lockdown and gave me a job which kept my head above water again. I was cleaning window, windows, doing gutters training out the back garden, doing push-ups and sit-ups, going on runs every day like most people in lockdown. But I really felt like my trajectory was going like this. I played academy, played some games for Ireland, got the camera, had a first-team contract, and then boom, I sunk into that hole. And to be honest, it was a dark time for myself because I didn't know where, where I was going to end up. And um, in about August of 2020, the Super League over in the UK recommenced. Huddersfield were back playing, but I wasn't back in the squad yet because my contract didn't start to 2021. So I was really, really hopeful of getting called back in and I could see that there was injury problems at Huddersfield and things weren't going as planned. And oh, I think it cut out. No, it didn't cut out. It didn't cut out. Things didn't go as planned. <clears throat> there was injury problems at Huddersfield and I really could see myself getting an opportunity if I just got back in to Huddersfield, got back training with the first team. But unfortunately, it was locked down and they couldn't bring anyone into the bubble. As the months went by, August, September, around the back end of September, I got a phone call saying Huddersfield were gonna bring me back in a little bit early, even though my contract didn't start till the following season. They brought me back in, got me back in training with the squad, which was something I was overjoyed about. I was really happy to be back in training, back in with the squad and then, at the end, the last game of the season, after being 18th, 19th man on the bench, reserve player for weeks and weeks and weeks, I got to make my Super League debut. The second ever homegrown Irish player making a Super League debut. And what a moment that was. I, all my family watching back home because it was behind closed doors. And I got to make it against the league leaders who won League Leader Shield on that game, Wigan Warriors. But what an opportunity that was. Off the back of that then, I had my contract for the following year, which I spent most of that season on loan, on teams, at teams like Swinton and Whitehaven, playing a bit in the championship, earning my stripes, learning my craft, because at the end of the day, I hadn't actually played that much rugby league still, like I'd only been playing a handful of years now, three, three years maybe at this stage, so I really needed to build myself up. My contract got extended for 2022, and I spent the fall of 2022 on loan at York Knights, which leads me to where we are now. Off the back of the 2022 season, full stint on loan at Huddersfield, one ankle reconstruction, uh, not reconstruction, my cinders most, so I got an ankle surgery during that year, and I owe myself a two-year contract at York Knights, and spent the last, last year, and now this current season, at York Knights. So I'm currently here at York, in York here recording this film. I've come off the back of a shoulder injury, and I've got myself back playing now. So I got a shoulder surgery in the off-season, after the back of the last year, my oh, forgot to mention, 2022 made my World Cup debut. The World Cup I told you I qualified for. 
So in 2022, I literally skipped our past all that, I do apologise. 2022, the World Cup that we had qualified for pre-COVID had been pushed back a year due to the pandemic. So it was meant to be in 2021, got pushed back to 2022. And in the third and final game in the group, I got to make my debut against the number one ranked team at the time, New Zealand. Got to debut against New Zealand, arguably the best team in the world at the time, filled with NRL superstars. Made my debut, had my two years at York, and I'm in my second year now. Here we are, talking to you. I hope that story made sense. I hope the delivery made sense as well. But I would like to join you to all thank you. I hope that story made sense. I hope the delivery made sense also. And please don't forget to follow, subscribe, and join along on the journey for loads of insights into my life as a pro rugby league player how I'm getting on and also loads of tips if you want to make it pro as well as someone who's been through a lot of adversity and a lot of hardship. Thanks for watching.